Good morning, folks and family. This is once again Raymond X, the Prophet. It's February 20th, 2020, on a Thursday morning, 11.26 a.m. February 20th, 2020, Thursday, 11.26 a.m. Raymond X, the Prophet, once again speaking to you. This is the Word for Today, Part 1, for February 15th, 2020. Once again, the Word for Today, Part 1, February 15th, 2020. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about the Word of God today. It's probably going to take about 25 minutes or so to do. A lot of my sermons last about 25, 30 minutes. Some of them 10, 15 minutes, some even 5 minutes. Let's go ahead and go talk about the Word of God for today. This is at 0800 8 a.m. February 14, 2020. This is a Bible app on my cell phone. And I received Daniel chapter 12, verse 9. Daniel 12, 9. And I'm going to expand on that a little bit. Daniel chapter 12, verses 5 through 12, key verse 9. And I, Daniel, looked, and there stood two others, one on this river bank, and the other that river bank. And one said to the man clothed in linen, who was above the waters of the river, How long shall the fulfillment of these wonders be? And I heard the man clothed in linen, who was above the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand to heaven, and swore by him who lives forever, it shall be for a time, times, and half a time. That is, three and a half years. And when the power of the holy people has been completely shattered, all these things shall be finished. Although I heard, I did not understand, and I said, My Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, Go your way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed to the time of the end. Many shall be purified, made white, and refined. But the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand. But the wise shall understand. And from the time that the daily sacrifice is taken away, the abomination of desolation is set up, there shall be 1,290 days. Blessed is he who waits and comes to the 1,335 days. But you go your way till the end, for you shall rest and will rise to your inheritance at the end of the days. Okay, folks, the family, the next journal entry I have for you is at 7.30 p.m. February 14, 2020, and this is the word I received. And I've, I've thought about this for a long time, many, many years. If there was no such thing as sin, there'd be no need for Jesus to die. His death would have been in vain and pointless. If there was no such thing as sin, there would be no need for Jesus to die. His death would have been, been pointless and in vain. And here is the books of the Bible to support that statement. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26. Verse John chapter 5, verse 16. Romans chapter 8, verses 1 through 39. Verse John chapter 1, verse 10. First Corinthians 6 and 14. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 14 through 17. First Corinthians chapter 15, verses 3 and 4 and verse 21. Second Corinthians chapter 5. Verses 14 and 15. And finally, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 12 through 32. Romans chapter 8, verses 1 through 39. Romans 8, 1 through 39. There is therefore no now condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who did not, no, do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, but it is not always, but it's not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. And if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. 
Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God, the children of God. For you do not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you receive the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. That is, Daddy, Daddy, literally. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs of Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us for the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subject to futility, not willing it, but because of him who subject it in hope, because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors of birth pains together until now. Not only that, but we also have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. For we are saving this hope, our hope that is seen is not hope, but why does still one still hope for what he sees? If we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. Likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our weakness. Weaknesses, if we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose, for whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. What well, then shall we say to these things, if God is for us, who can, be for, who can be against us? He who did not spare his only son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall I not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died, and furthermore is also risen who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, For your sake we are killed all day long, if we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us, from the, separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. And God both raised up the Lord, and will also raise us up by His power. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 3 and 4, 21. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4, For I deliver to you, first of all, that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and he was buried, and he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 21, For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 12 through 32. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 12-32 through 32. Now if Christ has preached that he has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say there is no resurrection of the dead? But there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty, and your faith is also empty. Yes, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he did not raise up, and in fact the dead do not rise. But the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, and your faith is futile, you are still in your sins. Then also who also those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all of the men the most pitiable. But now Christ has risen from the dead, and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For by for since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. But each one 
in his own order, Christ, the first fruits after those who are Christ and his coming. Then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom of God to the Father, whom he puts an end to all rule and authority and power. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that will be destroyed is death. For he has put all things under his feet. But when he has says all things are put under him, it is evident that he, he who put all things under him is accepted. Now when all things are made subject to him, then the Son himself will also be subject to him who put all things under him, that God may be all in all. Otherwise, what will they do who are baptized for the dead? The dead do not rise at all. Why well, then are they baptized for the dead? And why do we stand in jeopardy every hour? I affirm by the boasting in you which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord, I die daily. If in the manner of men I fought with beasts at Ephesus, what advantage is it to me? If they did not rise, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. Second Corinthians five fourteen and 15. The love of Christ compels us, because we judge thus, that if one died for all, then all died. He died for all, that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 14 through 17. First Thessalonians 4, 14 through 17. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall be with the and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another with these words. Hebrews chapter ten verse twenty six. Hebrews ten and twenty six. For if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. First John chapter one verses one through ten. First John one one through ten. That which was from the beginning which we have heard which ye have seen with our eyes, which ye have looked upon, and our hands have handled, concerning the word of life. The life was manifested, and we have seen and bear witness, and declare to you that eternal life, which was of the Father, and which was manifested to us, that which we have seen and heard, we declare to you, that you also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father, and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things be right to you, that you joy, that your joy may be full. This is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you, that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. 1 John chapter 5, verse 16. 1 John 5 and 16. If anyone sees his brother sinning a sin which does not lead to death, he will ask, and he will give him life for those who commit sin, not leading to death. There is sin leading to death. I do not say that he should pray about that. Okay, at 7.40 p.m., February 14, 2020, this next journal entry, a miracle worker he is. A miracle worker he is. This is Jesus I'm talking about. It's found in the book of Psalms, 136, verses 4 through 22. The book of Isaiah, chapter 43, verses 16 through 19. First Kings, chapter 17, verses 8 through 24. Second Kings. Chapter 5, verses 1 through 19. Daniel, chapter 3, verses 8 through 30. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 14, verses 13 through 21. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 6, verses 30 through 44. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 9, verses 10 through 17. The Gospel of John, chapter 6, verses 1 through 14. The Gospel of John, chapter 11, verses 28 through 44. The book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 16, chapter 4, verses 30 and 48. 1 Kings, chapter 17, verses 8 through 24. 
Elijah and the widow. 1 Kings chapter 17 verses 8 through 24. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Zidon, and dwell there. See, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. So he arose and went to Zarephath. When he came to the gate of the city, indeed, a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called her and said, Please bring a little water and a cup that I might drink. And as she was going to get it, he called her and said, Please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. So she said, As the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread, only a handful of flour and a bin, a little oil in a jar, and see, I am gathering a couple of sticks that may go in and prepare for myself and my son, that we may eat and, and die. And Elijah said to her, Do not fear, go and do as you have said, but make me a small cake from it first, and bring it to me, and afterward make some for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, The bin of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. So she went away and did according to the word of Elijah, and she and he and her household ate for many days. The bin of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry, according to the word of the Lord which he spoke by Elijah. Elijah revives the widow's son. Now it happened after these things that the son of the woman who owned the house became sick, and his sickness was so serious that there was no breath left in him. So she said to Elijah, What I have to do to you, O man of God? Have you come to me to bring my sin to remembrance and to kill my son? And he said to her, Give me your son. So he took him out of his arms and carried him to the upper room where he was staying, and laid him on his own bed. And he cried out to the Lord, and said, O Lord God, O Lord my God, have you also brought tragedy on the widow, with whom I lodged by killing her son? And he stretched himself out on the child three times, and cried out to the Lord, and said, O Lord my God, I pray let this child's soul come back to him. The Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came back to him, and he revived. And Elijah took the child, and brought him down from the upper room into the house, and gave him to his mother, and Elijah said, See, your son lives. Then the woman said, Elijah, now by this I know you are a man of God, and that the word of the Lord in your mouth is the truth. Second Kings chapter 5, verses 1 through 19. Second Kings 5, 1 through 19. Naaman's leprosy healed. Now Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Syria, was a great and honorable man in the eyes of his master, because by him the Lord had given him victory to Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor, but a leper. And the Syrians had gone out on the raids and had brought back a captive, a young girl from the land of Israel. She waited on Naaman's wife, and she said to her mistress, If only my master were with the prophet who was in Samaria, for he would have healed of his leprosy. And Naaman went in and told his master, saying, Thus and thus said the girl who is from the land of Israel. Then the king of Syria said, Go now, and I will send a letter to the king of Israel. He departed, took with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, and ten changes of clothing. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel, which said, Now be advised, when this letter comes to you, I have sent Naaman my servant to you, that you may heal him of his leprosy. And it happened when the king of Israel read the letter, that he tore his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and make alive, that this man sends me a demand to me to heal him of his leprosy? Therefore please consider and see how he seeks a quarrel with me. So it was when Elisha, the man of his God, the man of God heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, he sent to the king, saying, why have you torn your clothes? Please let him come to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. The Naaman went with his horses and chariot, and he stood at the door of Elisha's house. And Elisha sent a messenger to him, saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall be restored to you, and you shall be clean. But Naaman became furious and went away, and said, Indeed, I said to myself, He will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God, and wave his hand over the place, and heal leprosy. Are not the Abana and the Far, far, the rivers of Damascus, far, 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 the rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel. Do I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in, in a rage. And his servants came near and spoke to him and said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do something great, would you not have done it? How much more than when he says to you, wash and be clean? So he went down and did seven times in the Jordan according to saying the men of God. And his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. And he returned to the man of God, he and all his aides, and stood before him and said, Indeed, now I know there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. Now therefore, please take a gift from your servant. But he said, The Lord lives before whom I stand, I receive nothing. He urged him to take it, but he refused. So Naaman said, Then if not, please let your servant be given two mule loaves of earth, for your servant will no longer offer either burnt offering or sacrifice of the gods. But to the Lord, yet in this thing may the Lord 
Pardon your servant when my master goes into the temple of Rimmon to worship there. He leans on my hand when I bow down the temple of Rimmon. When I bow down the temple of Rimmon, may the Lord please pardon your servant in this thing. He said to him, Go in peace. So he departed from him a short distance. Psalm 136, verses 4 through 22. Psalm 136, verses 4 through 22. To him alone does great wonders, for his mercy endures forever. To him by his wisdom made the heavens, for his mercy endures forever. To him laid out the earth above the waters, for his mercy endures forever. To him made great lights, for his mercy endures forever. The sun to rule by day, for his mercy endures forever. The moon and, star, the moon and stars to rule by night, and for his mercy endures forever. To him he struck Egypt and their firstborn, for his mercy endures forever, and brought Israel from among them, for his mercy endures forever. With a strong hand, with an outstretched arm, for his mercy endures forever. To him divide the Red Sea in two, for his mercy endures forever. And made Israel pass to the midst of it, for his mercy endures forever. But overthrew Pharaoh and his army in the Red Sea, for his mercy endures forever. To him led his people through the wilderness, for his mercy endures forever. To him has struck down great kings, for his mercy endures forever, and slew famous kings, for his mercy endures forever. Sidon king of the Amorites, for his mercy endures forever. And Og king of Bashan, for his mercy endures forever, and gave their land as a heritage, for his mercy endures forever, a heritage to Israel his servant, for his mercy endures forever. The book of Isaiah, chapter 43, verses 16 through 19. Isaiah 43, 16-19 Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea and a path through the mighty waters, who brings forth the chariot and the horse, the army and the power. They shall lie down together, they shall not rise. They are extinguished, they are quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do new thing, now shall spring forth, shall you not know it. I will even make a road in the wilderness, and rivers in the desert. Daniel chapter 3, verses 8-30 Daniel chapter 3, verses 8 through 30. Therefore, at the time certain Chaldeans came forward and accused the Jews, they spoke and said to the king Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, and psaltery, in sympathy with all kinds of music, shall fall down and worship the gold image. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast in the midst of a fire, burning fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not paid due regard to you. You do not serve your gods or worship the gold image which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in rage and fury, gave the command to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the gold image which I have set up? Now, if you are ready at the time, you hear the sound of the horn, flute, harp, Lyre and psaltery and sympathy with all kinds of music, and you fall down and worship the image which I have made. Good. If you do not worship, you shall be cast immediately into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And who is the God who delivered you from my hands? Shabbat, Meshach, Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If that is the case, our God, whom we have served, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor we worship the gold image which you have set up. The Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, and the expression of his face changed toward Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He spoke and commanded that they heat the furnace seven times more than it was usually heated. And he commanded certain mighty men of valor who were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and cast them to the burning fiery furnace. And these men were bound in their coats, their trousers, their turbans, and the other garments and they were cast amidst the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's command was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell, fell down bound into the midst of the fire, burning fiery furnace. Then the king of Nebuchadnezzar was astonished, and he rose in haste and spoke, saying to his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? He answered and said to the king, True, O king. Look, he answered, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of fire, and they are not hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. The Nebuchadnezzar went near the mouth of the burning fiery furnace, and spoke, saying, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out and come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came from the midst of the fire, 
in the satraps, the satraps, the administrators, the governors, and the king's counselors gathered together, and they saw that these men whose bodies of fire had no power. The hair of their head was not singed, nor were their garments affected, and the smell of fire was not on them. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel, and delivered his servants who trusted in him. And they frustrated the king's word and yielded their bodies, that they should not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Therefore I will make a decree to any people, nation, or language who speaks anything amiss against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made an ash heap, because there is no other god in Gluber like this. And the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Matthew chapter 14, verses 13 through 21. Matthew 14, verses 13 through 21. Feeding the five thousand, when Jesus heard it, he departed from there by a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the multitudes heard it, they followed him on foot from the cities. And when Jesus went out, he saw a great multitude, and he was moved with compassion for them, and he healed their sick. When it was evening, his disciples came to him, saying, This is a deserted place, and the hour is already late. Send the multitudes away, that they may go into the villages and buy themselves food. But Jesus said to them, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. He said to him, We have here only five loaves and two fish. He said, Bring them here to me. Then he commanded the multitudes to sit down on the grass. He took the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he blessed and broke and gave the loaves to the disciples. And the disciples gave the multitudes, so they all ate and were filled, and they took up twelve baskets full of the fragments that remained. Now those who had eaten were about five thousand men, besides women and children. Mark chapter 6, verses 30 through 44. Mark chapter 6, verses 30 through 44. Being the five thousand, then the apostles gathered Jesus and told him all things of what they had done and what they had taught. He said to them, Come aside by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while. For there were many coming and going, they did not even have, any, have time to eat. So they departed to a deserted place in the boat by themselves. But the multitude saw them departing, and many knew and ran there on foot from all the cities. They arrived before them and came together to him. And Jesus, who, when he came out, he saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion for them because they were like a sheep. They were like sheep not having a shepherd. So he began to teach them many things. When the day was now far spent, his disciples came to him and said, "This is a deserted place, and already the hour is late. Send them away that they may go into the surrounding country and villages and buy themselves bread, for they have nothing to eat." But he answered and said to them, "You give them something to eat." They said to him, "Shall we go and buy two hundred denarii worth of bread and give them something to eat?" But he said to them, "How many loaves do you have? Go and see." When they found out, they said, Five and two fish. He commanded them to make them all sit down in groups on the green grass. They sat down in ranks in hundreds and in fifties. When he had taken up the five loaves and two fish, he looked up to heaven, blessed and broke the loaves, and gave them to the disciples to set for them. And the two fish he divided among them all. So they all ate and were filled, and they took up twelve baskets full of fragments and of the fish. Now those who had eaten the loaves were about five thousand men. Luke chapter 9, verses 10 through 17. Luke nine ten to seventeen, and the apostles, when they had returned, told him all they had done. And he took them and went, private, went aside private into a deserted place, belonging to the city called Bethsaida. But when the multitudes knew it, they followed him and received them and spoke to them about the kingdom of God and healed them, healed those who had need of healing. When the they began to wear away, the twelve came and said to him, Send the multitudes away that we they may go into the surrounding towns and country, and lodge and get provisions for we are in a deserted, for we are in a deserted place here. He said to them, but he said to them, You give them something to eat. And they said, We have no more than five loaves and two fish unless we go and buy food for all these people, for they were about five thousand men. He said to the disciples, Make them sit down in groups of fifty, and they did so, and made them all sit down. And he took the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he blessed and broke them, and gave them to the disciples to set before the multitude. So they all ate and were filled, and twelve baskets of the leftover fragments were taken up by them. John chapter 6, verses 1 through 14. John 6, 1 through 14. After these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias, and the great multitude followed him because they saw his signs which he performed on those who were diseased. And Jesus went up on the mountain there where he sat with his disciples. Now, the Passover feast of Jews was near. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes and seeing a great multitude coming toward him, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread that these may eat? But this he said to test him, for he knew he himself knew what he would do. 
Who will answer in 200 denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may have a little. One of the disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter, said to him, There is a lad here who has five barley loaves and two small fish, but where are they among so many? Then Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was so much now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in numbers of about five thousand. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given things, he distributed them to his disciples and the disciples of those sitting down, and likewise of the fish, as much as they wanted. So when they were filled, he said to his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, so that nothing is lost. Therefore, they gathered them up and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which were left over by those who had eaten. And those men, when they had seen the sign that Jesus did, said, This is truly the prophet who is to come into the world. John chapter 11, verses 28 through 44. John 11, 28 through 44. Jesus and death, the last enemy. And when she had said these things, she went her way and secretly called Mary, her sister, saying, The teacher has come and is calling for you. As soon as she heard that, she rose quickly and came to him. Now Jesus was not yet coming to the town, but was in the place where Martha met him. Then the Jews were with her in the house and comforting her, when they saw that Mary rose up quickly and went out and followed her, saying, She is going to the tomb to weep there. Then Mary, then when Mary came to where Jesus was, saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping, the Jews came to her with her weeping. He groaned in the spirit and was troubled, and he said, Where he had laid him, is in him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Then the Lord Jews said, See how he loved him? And then some of them said, Could not this man open the eyes of the blind also have kept this man from dying? Lazarus raised from the dead. Then Jesus again groaning in himself came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not say to you that you would, if you believe you would see the glory of God? They took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I know that you always hear me, but because of the people who were standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. Now when he had said these things, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth! And when he had died, come out, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to him, Loose him and let him go. The book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 16. Acts 3 and 16. And his name, through faith in his name, had made this man strong, whom you see and know. Yes, the faith which comes through him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Acts chapter 4, verses 30 and 48. Acts 4, verse 30. By stretching out your hand to heal, that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. Well, folks, I don't see an Acts 4, verses, 4, verses uh, Acts 4, 48. There is none. So I'll leave it at 4, 30. Acts 4 and 30. Okay, folks and family, the Spotify worship song I have for you is a song called Waymaker. This is by Mandiza. Man Dies a Waymaker. The original one was by Leland. Leland actually wrote the first one. This one is a cover by Man Dies a Waymaker. And I'll post a link to that in the description box below. The YouTube video I don't have listed here, but I will have it in the description box below when you view this video. Okay, folks and family, that's the Word for Day Part 1. February 15th, 2020. Once again, the Word for Day Part 1. February 15th, 2020. Everyone have a blessed day. Take care of yourselves. God loves you. And so do I. God bless you all and everything you do. Remember, Jesus is coming soon. Very, very soon. Sooner than you think. Get ready for his return. Everyone have a blessed weekend. Take care of yourselves. Also remember that Jesus is coming soon. This is your day of salvation. Your day of decision making. And judgment is also coming soon too. Okay, folks. Take care of yourselves. Have a blessed day. And I'll talk to you later. The next part of the video is going to be version part 1.5 of this series because this is really too long for to do all of one part one in one go. So part 1.5 will 
will come after this video. And then part two after that. Okay, folks, take care of yourselves. I love you all very much. Bye-bye for now.